When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So says Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, and in this he follows in Jesus' own example. Jesus comes using the commonplace, the things of this world, salt and light. And I want to proclaim the mystery of God to you today and every day that I'm with you. And I'm going to try my best not to use lofty words either. And today I just want to talk to you about love. If you were hoping for my preaching to uh, gradually drip feed you tantalising nuggets week by week to keep you coming back for the next twist, then I'm going to disappoint you. This isn't going to be a a drawn-out adventure series like Lost. That'll give you a a clue as to the last time I watched television. No, you're going to get a a massive spoiler today. This is the punchline. This is what it's all aiming towards. You ready? God is love, and you are called to live out this truth by loving the Lord your God and loving your neighbour as yourself. That is as deep a mystery as I know, and that is the simplest way of saying it that I know. God is love, and you are called to live out this truth by loving the Lord your God and loving your neighbour as yourself. And how we learn to do that is called discipleship, and that's what Jesus is talking to his disciples about in today's Gospel. And what he's teaching is that to be a a faithful follower of God is to be a lively follower. You disciples, he says, are the salt of the earth. I always think that the, the best example of saltiness in the scriptures are the prophets. You know, when you read of their lives, almost every one of them at some point gets exiled from their community, sent to live out in a cave in the wilderness on their own because they're so jolly awkward to live with. And the reason they're so awkward to live with is because they just won't stop proclaiming God's love. But they don't proclaim it to the leaders and the powerful. They proclaim it to the outcast and the orphan, the widow, the foreigner, the destitute and the downtrodden. And that really gets underneath people's skin. We are called to be salt, the salt of the earth, because we are here to to shake up the earth, to give it a bit of flavour, to turn things upside down with the love of God. That can be uncomfortable, but the result is this place looking a bit more like heaven. But Jesus says to his disciples, you've got to be salty salt, no good being salt that's lost its flavour, you've got to be salty salt. Now I'm part of that generation uh, that grew up being taught that salt was the enemy, that it was evil, it was going to make your heart explode, that the food industry was secretly smuggling it into everything that they sold you. And so um, when I cook, I take the, the salt mill and I just sort of waft it over the top of the pot, a kind of homeopathic approach to salting my food. I don't actually ever twist the thing and I just hope that by magical osmosis the, the salty flavour will get into my food. My dad's a member of a different generation when he sits down for his dinner, before we've even seen, said grace, you can see him, he's, he's warming his wrists up, you know what I mean? Bending them back, and then he starts rolling the shoulders, and he sees the salt mill over there, he and the salt mill, they're old friends, they go back a long way, and he picks it up, and then there's these great big whoosh, 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 and the stuff is just cascading down all over his dinner, and you can see like little stars twinkling all over the top of it. That's salty saltness, isn't it? And then Jesus, he tells his disciples, let me put it another way to you. You are the light of the world. It was just last week at Candlemas that we heard Simeon declare, Jesus, the light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. Truth and beauty radiate out from the love of Jesus. And as his followers, we're, we're caught up in that. And it is reflected off us to the world. 
He is the source of light. We are mirrors to the world. But he says to his disciples again, it's no good if the light can't be seen reflecting off you. Salt and light is who we are, but we've got to be salty and we've got to be bright. And I want you to understand something else about what Jesus is saying here. And we can easily miss it when we're reading the lines, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And it's because in modern English, we've just got one word, you. If you come to the eight o'clock service, the old one, then you've got the word thou for just one other person and you for a group of other people. But in modern English, we just use you to mean one person, you to mean lots of people. So if I said to you, uh, I want you to get me a glass of water, you'd have no way of knowing if I wanted one of you to get me one glass of water or if I was really thirsty and what I was asking for was 80 glasses of water. Our American friends, they found a way to solve this problem. They've invented a new word. So if I was a thirsty American and I wanted a lot of glasses of water, I might say, hey, I want y'all to get me a glass of water. And if I was from uh, the southern states and I was like really thirsty and there were like 400 people in the church, then I might say, hey, I want all y'all to get me a glass of water. And then I'd have lots and lots of water. And that is the sense of what Jesus is saying here. All y'all are the salt of the earth. All y'all are the light of the world. It's not a solitary calling. It's not even each one of us, but as individuals. It is all of us together as a single group. And that's obvious when you think about the metaphors. Salt is most effective in its work when it's used with other elements. Salt works in tandem with other food to bring out the best flavour. And light needs something to illuminate. Think back to the creation narrative, the very beginning of the scriptures. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And from this that we learn, not only did God create the heavens and the earth, but he did it in the dark. It was only after he'd made them that he turned on the light. And the point, of course, is that if you light up nothing, you've still got nothing. A bright nothing and a dark nothing are just the same. Light only works when it's got something to reflect off, and then it becomes beautiful and wonderful. Let's come back to where we started. God is love and you are called to live out this truth by loving the Lord your God and loving your neighbour as yourself. Jesus is teaching us how to do that by being salty salt and shining lights together. By being that salty love that intends to exalt the lowly and shake this world up. By being that shining light that radiates out truth and beauty. I've been doing a, a lot of praying this last week. And what the Spirit has put on my heart for this community is a season of love. That's the discipleship that I want us to focus on together. And the prayer that I keep coming back to is this simple line. Now listen carefully. Lord, do not let me pass by an opportunity to demonstrate your love today. And I thought you might be able to pray that tomorrow morning as the first words on your lips when you wake up. Lord, do not let me pass by an opportunity to demonstrate your love today. Could you pray that tomorrow? St Mary's? Can you pray it with me now? Lord, do not let me pass by an opportunity to demonstrate your love today. Amen.